All right, are we ready for this? This is the moment of truth after one year of just sleeping. The Bat Cave or the Mushroom Cave? I didn't know our Stardew Valley community are so passionate about this single choice in the game. A post on a Facebook group got my attention as a lot of people took the opposite choice to mine and, well, I was curious about both options. Is there a better choice of the two? I'm going to explore that question in this video and then I'll let you know which one I personally take and why. Could I change your mind? Let's find out. Alright, let's have a look at the Bat Cave. Demetrius infests my little cave with a bunch of these fine specimens and they have a chance every day to drop types of fruit in the cave for me. The types of fruits can be looked at in two categories. The forageable fruits that you can usually gather in all their specific seasons but they have a chance to drop in the cave regardless of the current season. Uh, kind of like a greenhouse cave. These include salmon berries which are spring, spice berries which are summer, wild plums and blackberries which are fall fruits. The other type are tree fruits and they are also season specific outside this cave and they only grow on trees which are expensive and they take a very long time to get going. The tree needs an initial 28 days to grow and then produce fruit. Cherry and apricots which are spring trees, orange and peaches which are a summer tree and finally we have the apple and the pomegranate which are fall trees. For this analysis, I'll have both types of caves and I'll look at them for a full month and then determine what I get at the end, what rate things spawn and then how useful these items are to us. Let's check the first day after I've set up the back cave. Oh wow, this is a bounty. I didn't expect this much on the first day. There are some fruits from all the seasons here. And an orange as well, that is the most worthwhile fruit here. Uh, luck could have something to do with it. Yeah, the first day I had good luck. Okay, no worries, uh, now on to the next day. Oh, would you look at that? It gave me a forage level as well. I'm going to take the gatherer here as it'll help pick up more fruit. And yes folks, picking up these items in this cave helps your foraging skill. Day two, I find a single spice berry and today's luck was neutral. Uh, luck could have an effect on it. Day three, the spirits are annoyed at me and it shows the bat cave is empty. Day 4, neutral spirits and I find one blackberry in the cave. You know what, maybe Ben likes a blackberry. Or maybe he just likes the fact that I'm paying him some attention. And day 5, the spirits are in good humor, uh, same as the other day. And yes, from that we get one peach in the back cave. Looking good so far. So this is 5 days into it. Uh, we are on the 28th of spring, it's a Sunday. And you know what, I feel like sleeping for a while. <laughs> I slept through an earthquake. Righto, summer the 7th, I slept for 7 days, let's have a look at what is in the bat cave. Okay, during my hibernation we were rewarded with 4 fruits, uh, 2 spice berries, a plum and a blackberry. That's not too bad for sleeping it off. Okay, let's hibernate until the 24th, which will make it the full month duration. And let's go investigate the bat cave. Okay, cool, we got a bounty. We have fruits from all the seasons here. We have uh, three oranges, an apricot, and a cherry, which are the most valuable to us. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a chest so we can put all this stuff together. So this is what we found in the back cave over the span of one month in-game time. Let's split these two stacks up and see what it looks like. A total of 32 fruits. There was one normal salmon berry that joined my other stack, and I'm glad that I picked up on that. Before I look at these two fruit stacks, I explored the wiki a bit as well. It looks like the back cave has a hard percentage on how many fruits can spawn per day. There is a 48% chance that no new fruit will spawn. There is a 25% chance that one fruit can spawn. There is a 13% chance that two fruit can spawn. Then there's a 7% chance that three fruit can spawn. And then another 7 chance that four or more could spawn. The first calculator has to land on one of those fruit spawn rates, 25, 13, 7, 7, and then it calculates which fruit will spawn, uh, which items will show up, they all have their own percentages as well. The general forageables will have 20% each to spawn, whereas those fruit trees have a much smaller chance of dropping, and apple having a 2% chance of dropping for example. What is the main reason we choose the back cave? other than it sounding pretty awesome that you have the Batcave on your farm. 
The tree fruits are a great way to complete a few bundles in the community center, mainly the artisan, enchanter and fodder bundles. Here is a quick look at those bundles. Plus, it also saves us having to spend money on the trees and waiting 28 days for them to grow. The common fruits are all used for their foraging bundles as well, except for the salmon berry. Fruits make a great gift because they are all neutral likes. Old Gussie Boy here likes himself a good orange. The back cave would suit someone who doesn't want to check on the cave on a daily basis as it generates items every so often. Leave it for a few weeks and then collect whatever is in there as a single day boost. Fruits in the cave will never despawn and everything can be made into wines, which will either triple or quadruple their worth depending if you have the artisan profession. How much is this lot worth? I will multiply these assuming I make them into wines. The quality here will not matter, the wines increase the base price of these items by either 3 or 4 times. I will do it at the highest rate because I like taking the artisan skill and selling these at base wine quality. And here are those figures on the screen. Uh, the total I can make from this lot is 8,253, which is actually pretty damn nice. And that was a look at the Bat Cave. Ah, the Mushroom Cave doesn't sound as fancy as the Bat Cave. It looks slightly different. Demetrius fills it with six mushroom boxes. I already have a save file with this one already, so because the back cave started with nothing, let's grab what's in here now and start the month from tomorrow, which will be the 9th. Okay, first day we find an assortment of mushrooms, brown, red and a morale. Day 2, another load of mushrooms from the same kind as day 1. I thought these take a bit longer to spawn. It is the first thing I do in the morning. I have a routine here which is literally run to the cave every morning, sleep and repeat. I'm not checking the luck in this section as it does not affect the outcome. I could be wrong but it doesn't really matter as I'm doing it for 28 days. Also all the mushrooms will be regular quality and you can't get experience from gathering these. Day 3 is another load of brown mushrooms and one purple one. Nice! Day 4 is one red and five brown. And day 5 is the same as yesterday. It actually looks like we're getting something from this on a daily basis, which kind of makes this a problem. I need to check these boxes every day if I'm going to continue getting value out of this. And I'm going to fast forward this collecting sequence until the 9th next month. It's not like the back cave where there is still a chance of something spawning every day regardless if you do not collect. Whatever spawns will stay like this until you gather them. If you don't gather the mushrooms, it counts against you. And here we are on the final day. I've kept the mushrooms for a full 28 days and this is the stack we have, 177 mushrooms in total. I was confused at the frequency of these, so I also sat idle for a whole day, slept and then went back in the morning and yes, they are still there. The trick is, I guess, set yourself a time where you collect these every day. Make it a routine. Here we have an overview of all the mushrooms we can get in this cave. All these mushrooms are used in community center bundles as well, main ones being the dye and the exotic bundles. Mushrooms can be more common than the fruits in the back cave if the player makes an effort to collect them every day. They don't make great gifts except for the wizard as he loves his purple shrooms. They all have the percentages of spawning as well but the spawn rate for these are better than the bat cave. Seeing as if you make a routine, you'll get a daily supply of mushrooms. The bat cave needs to meet the first criteria of being able to spawn something. As mushrooms are a reliable source, they can be a great supply of food if you're going to the mines and if you make the point of checking these daily. If you're not paying much attention to these, then it becomes less valuable to you. A brown mushroom is worth 38 energy, and if we multiply that by 123, we get 4674 energy from these mushrooms alone. And they also heal 17 HP per shroom. This cave is also the best method to make the life elixir on a regular basis. Great item for the mines as well. A month of mushrooms sells for 11,145, which is also quite nice. So, what cave would I take? Now before I say this, I'll state the fact that I'm a type of player who likes to maximize everything and get as much done as quickly as possible, doing achievements, that sort of thing. Now with that in mind, I will always take the mushroom cave, and this has been my choice before as well. 
I've even made it in my 25 random tips video, which I will link at the end. For me, the Mushroom Cave is a more reliable source of energy. Both caves can be used to complete bundles in the community center. The tree fruits are helpful for the artisan bundle, I agree. But you have a choice of 6 items out of a list of 12 to donate, and my playstyle involves animals. I don't need the fruits for that bundle. Now I would argue that the Enchanter and the Fodder Bundle Fruits are the only two you actually need to complete the Community Center, and they are the Apple and the Pomegranate Trees. I don't struggle with the Artisan Bundle, as the Pantry builds itself up towards that final bundle. If you do all the earlier Pantry Bundles, you can do the Artisan one much easier because the rewards are built for it. I have a mini Community Center series where I cover a one year challenge, and if you're interested in seeing my approach to the community center, follow the links at the end of this video and you'll see that playlist. Of course, I am a certain type of player, and my playing style doesn't suit everyone. I absolutely agree. If you're the player who doesn't care much for making that routine to the cave daily, then yes, the back cave is the better option for you. The mushroom cave is only valuable if the player makes it valuable to them, because you have to collect the shrooms daily to actually draw benefit from it. This is also the main negative to choosing the shroom cave. The back cave, if left unattended, can eventually have 50 random fruits, and that would be awesome! I would actually like to see that one day. You know what, let's do it! Rightio, I have slept for an entire year. As you can see, I... Yeah, look at this mess, and I've got to try and get through this. Okay. <laughs> Good lord. Eh. I shall make it, people. I shall definitely make it, and here we have an owl statue. Alright, are we ready for this? This is the moment of truth after one year of just sleeping. <laughs> oh, that is great. Look at that, people. Let's see how many we can get here. Good lord almighty. So my question to you is, what kind of player are you? Let me know if you're a batter or a shroomer. Anyways, that wraps it up for this video, people. Cheers, peace out.